Hey guys, it's been a while. Did you miss me? I'm Brian Phillips with Soil Guy Customs, and a few years ago, I customized a pumpkin by painting the front of it. But today, I've come back to take it to the next level by carving it and covering it in Angelus leather dye. For my design, I think I'm gonna go with a zombie face type of thing. So I'm gonna use some Kelly green, some light blue to give it its sickly color. And then after we have it covered in the dye, we can start carving it. So just as a precaution, before I get started, I'm gonna hit it with some deglazer. There might be some dirt, oil, wax, something on it. So I just wanna make sure the surface is ready for the dye. So now it's time to move on to the next step. We're going to cover our pumpkin and dye. As always, it can get real messy, especially since we're also gonna be carving a pumpkin. It's always smart to put on some gloves. You don't wanna get that dye all over your hands. It will stay for a few days. So when working with leather dye, there's a few ways to go about it. You can use a paintbrush if you want, if you're trying to get very specific areas. Also, they come with this dauber that you can just dip into. And since we're working with a lot of space here and I wanna get full coverage, I think this is gonna be the way to go. Each Angelus leather dye box has a little pop in space right there where you can set your dye in, keeps it stabilized. You're not gonna risk spilling dye all over the place because that's another thing. If you get dye all over your workstation, your table, it's gonna be really difficult to get it out. So as I'm dyeing the pumpkin, I'm trying to get the top and the bottom alternatively. And what's happening is in the center, we're getting kind of this smudgy area. And so in order to combat that, I'm going to use an applicator pad and some dye and just rub it up and down to even out the tone of the dye. So after a few layers of dye, I think I'm good with the color. Did this really cool thing where some of the green went deeper, some of the turquoise went deeper, and it's kind of got all these varying shades of both. I'd be really curious to see what other colors look like on a pumpkin. So for the most part, it seems like the pumpkin's dried pretty well, but just to make sure you don't get any sort of dye on your hands, touching it or moving it around. I'm going to cover it in four coat. And what this will do is provide coverage around the pumpkin to protect it and also prevent any leather dye rub off and getting on your hands or anything like that. There's two ways to apply it. You can easily do it with a brush or you can put it in an airbrush and spread it around. I'm gonna show you both ways. So we're gonna get into the fun stuff. It's time to carve. And as always, you gotta cut the top off and gut out all the seeds and all the gross stuff inside. Now it's time to sketch out my design so I can map it out and know where to carve. You can always use a stencil the old school way or a marker and just kind of freehand it. Because I'm doing a very specific design, I'm gonna draw it out first. So I've got my design sketched out. I didn't go into too much detail. I just wanted a rough outline of what I was gonna do and then I can just carve and go from there. Now it's time to get carving. So I finished the carving portion of the pumpkin and it might look a little silly, a little rudimentary, but that's just the areas that I want all the way through. What I'm going to be using is some ceramic sculpting tools to carve out areas to create depth and different levels, but I don't want all the way through where the light's gonna be shining out. You can get these things at your local arts and crafts store. I've used them before on clay, but I've never used them on a pumpkin, so we'll see. So here's our carved pumpkin. It's not perfect, it's not beautiful, but I picked a zombie. Zombies are messy, this is messy, so it works for me. In the future, I probably should have sharpened the tools. They're really old, but if you have a fresh set, you probably shouldn't have as much trouble. Now, I wanna take it to the next level. I'm gonna take this small pumpkin, dye it, and shove it into the side of the head to make it look like exposed brains in the zombie. And now our pumpkin is finished. We've dyed it, carved it, sculpted it, put other pumpkins in it. I'm not sure what more we can do to it, but 
Overall, I'm really happy. This was my first time doing something like this and I think it came out pretty cool. I'm super happy with it, you know? It's a little messy, it's a little weird, but that's the fun of it, right? It's all experimentation. It's my first time doing this kind of stuff and it's a pumpkin. It's gonna decay in a few weeks and unlike other arts and crafts, it's not about perfection. You get to kind of just do whatever you want. So might as well go crazy, try a bunch of new things. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope it's got ideas swirling in your brain and you try your own version of this on a pumpkin. But as always, I'm Brian Phillips with Swell Guy Customs. You can check out more of my work on Instagram at Swell Guy Customs. And if you end up doing something like this, send me a photo. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Thanks again for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.